This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hey, everybody, this is Chase from Barrel Age Flicks. Go ahead and check out our Patreon for raw, uncut footage and early access to all of our episodes. The link is in the description, and it's only $5 a month. Thanks for listening. You have killed my warriors, and you think you have won. But death is only another portal. Sub-Zero. I am Sub-Zero. Frosty. Liu Kang. I'm Liu Kang. From the Shaolin Order of Light. Jax. Yeah, these motherfuckers work. Excellent. Johnny Cage. Those are $500 sunglasses, asshole. Finish him! Damn! That hurt! Raiden. I don't think so. Superb. You have failed to find the Arukana. Goro. Shang Tsung is a great source of fatality. Shang Tsung. It has begun. I have come for your souls. <laughs> Scorpion. Get over here. Get over here. Fight. Sonya. Just the way I like him. Dumb and ugly. Kano. Hello, baby. Did you miss me? <laughs> you weak, pathetic fools. I've come for your souls. I don't think so. Hey, everybody. This is Barrel Age Flicks. I'm Lenny. Yeah, man. And this is... Hey, this is Ron. Let's drink and talk some movies. We also have... What's going on, you fucking nerds? This is Tyler. Let's talk about some modern mythology. And finally... This is Stu. Let's drink, motherfucker. Fuck yeah! So this is the Mortal Kombat episode, everybody. Fucking awesome. I'm super stoked for this one. This was Tyler's pick. Uh, we're going to be going over the the newest uh, rendition of Mortal Kombat that just recently came out, plus the original, plus the game. It's going to be fucking awesome. We're going to start off by talking about the drink of choice. And I'm going to hand it over to Tyler. Go for it, brother. Dude, I'm so fucking jacked about this episode. Dude. Let's fucking do this I'm not shit. Jacked, yeah. I, I'm not jacked about this drink, but yeah, I'm jacked about this episode. <laughs> Pussy! So what, are, <laughs> what are we drinking, man? All right, dude. So like, what we're, we're uh, drinking today is we're drinking a modified scorpion shot from Surfer's <laughs> Bar and Restaurant in New Orleans. Um, really, all it is, like, it's just a typical tequila shot. Um, but we're, we, uh, we've made it with uh, Casamigos Blanco Tequila. Poured over rocks uh, with a, into with a uh, salted rim glass with a uh, wedge of lime. What makes this special is that we've uh, we've taken a dehydrated scorpion, we've dipped it in corn liquor, we set it on fire, and we dropped into the drink. We uh, we took a video of it. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and post that. Yeah, dude, dude Ron is like dreading this so bad. I, okay, it's not the scorpions that, that that bothers me. It's the fucking tequila. I do not like tequila. Yeah, yeah. Is so, it me or is he having more of a visceral reaction to tequila? Just shut the of fuck tequila. Up. Than the screwball whiskey. Oh man, we the might have to swap them out. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, no, we might no. have to. Right. Uh, I think that's get, get on with the show. Fuck you. So, <laughs> so the reason why this, the reason why this is a modified uh, shot from like or from the the one from Surfers is because the one from Surfers they actually dip it in diesel fuel. Oh and my the, god. Yeah, yeah. So we we weren't we about to do that. Um, but the corn liquor to work just as fine. Ron almost set himself on fire, which was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we didn't yeah, get that, that on video, unfortunately. But yeah, he fucking lit his hand on fire. It was kind of cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, real quick, uh, I just want to give a shout out to my buddy Rick, who uh, who recommended the uh, the Casamigos. Um, so hopefully this is this is good. Um, he definitely yeah, he definitely recommended it. Uh, here's to you, Rick. Thank you very much, man. Hell yeah! All right, all right, all right cheers, guys. Prost. Prost. We're just gonna have to. Right, now you guys. Prost. Yeah, it's kind of a. You guys are gonna eat the fucking scorpion, right? I will. I will too. I could say your mom joke, but I'm not going to do it. Your mom. Dear God, Ron. It's it's a drink. It's not a fucking shot. Jesus Christ. That's smooth. Did you eat the scorpion? No, but it's not that bad, actually. No, oh it's smooth. God. Oh, he actually likes it. I don't like it. I... Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a scorpion, ladies and gentlemen. That yes, was not was. a fucking potato chip. It wasn't bad. It's got Here, no taste to you, it, but it wasn't bad. Do you want mine? <laughs> No, you, you need to eat it. No, 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 no. I'm not eating it. You are fu- Eat it. See? Yeah, see? Now you're dead. That's the poison. You're going to die now. Eat it. I eat, don't want to. Eat it. Did you eat yours? Eat All right. It. If he doesn't eat, eat it, it, yeah. Eat no, it. You eat it or you take a punishment shot. I. 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 God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, somebody 
votes in my favor. You know what? No, eat? I'll take the punishment shot. I'm allergic to bees. I don't. I. I don't know what's gonna happen if I fucking eat this. Are you fucking serious? I'm serious. Give me. A, give me the fucking. The, give me the the talk or whatever the fuck like it is. Bees yeah, that's and fair. scorpions are related. Well, I don't know, but I don't want to find out. And then I fucking I can't breathe and I die. Just saying. It'll be good content. Here, you know what? <laughs> You do do it for the gram. Do it for the gram. Here, you you no. you eat. It. I'm gonna do. A I already punishment. ate two of them. I got wham. I'm gonna do a punishment shot here. Hey, what happened to it? They're high in protein. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't taste bad. It'll help you acquire mass. I'll take the punishment. It's fine. Yeah, look at that. Uh huh. Yeah, you pushy. Man, I'm so cool because right. I ate a bug. Form a shot. Yeah, form a fucking shot. Okay, fine. So I'm gonna do my punishment shot. I fucking hate you guys. Warm vodka. Ugh. Your favorite. Take it. Take it. Take it. Okay, 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 shut up. You can do it. Shut up. You know that's not the worst thing you've had in your mouth. Take it. <laughs> is, this a, is this a fucking prison scene? Take it. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Uh, we went a few episodes without a punishment shot. Boom! That happened. Yeah. No, that literally cleared out my fucking nose. All right, well, you know what? We haven't gotten to the review yet, so uh, how about you, Tyler? You go ahead and go first, since it's the one you picked. What do you think? Oh, it's good. Like, uh, I'm not a huge fan of, of tequila, but uh, it's definitely it's definitely a smooth tequila. Um, this, was, uh, this was like a uh, mid-shelf uh, tequila. I think the, the, the liter costs like uh, 60 bucks or something like that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's from uh, Jalisco, Mexico, so it's, it's legitimate. Mexican tequila, um, it's good. So I'll say I'll say one thumbs up. Um, I'll go ahead and give it one thumbs up. It wasn't that bad. It actually um, the scorpion it's just crunchy. It didn't really have any taste to it, so it's just like a crunch to it. Uh, plenty of protein. Um, the taste was uh, decent. The lime kind of helped a little bit in the salt, but um, I, I'll give it one thumbs up. It's 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 worth the taste. It, it's not bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, the lime the lime and the salt definitely helps. Yeah, it does. Give something add something to it. How about you, Stu? I'll give it one thumbs up. Um, I haven't had this type of tequila before. I'm pleasantly surprised. I usually drink Patron. That's my go-to for tequila. Um, but this is just a nice, smooth, white tequila. Right. That's all I'm tasting. How about you, Lenny? Um, uh, I hate to be, like, unoriginal, but probably the same. Uh, one thumbs up. You know, it's tequila. Tequila's right. not bad. Um, it, it's, uh... It's Sammy's drink, I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know she she's into tequila. It's it's not bad. I would give it one thumbs up. Um, it's uh, I'm the same as used to. I'm I'm more of a Patron guy when I do drink tequila. Yeah. So um, this is definitely I can taste the difference in terms of like quality. Yeah, but it's still it's drinkable. So yeah, I'm not gonna turn it down. It's not rock gut for sure. Just the just the scorpion because I'm a giant pussy apparently. Although very good choice, especially with the scorpion, knowing that uh, that's one of the best characters in Mortal Kombat right there. So yeah, well that's the reason why we, why we pick this drink is because you have sort of like the um, everything. It's very very closely related to the movie. You have scorpion that's like that's lit on fire. Scorpion like you know Hanzo Hisashi who was like who was condemned to hell but, like learned to control it um, by Sub Zero. So we're dropping this like this burning burning scorpion into like the uh, this uh, ice cold uh, uh, shot of tequila. So. It's like you know we have a, it's a good perfect, touch, perfect like, that like old you know, Sub Zero like scorpion versus Sub Zero kind of thing. So like so that's the reason why we picked it. It's uh, it's, cool. it's good shit. Yep. So we just jump right into it. All right, cool. cool. Let's do All it. Right. <clears throat> All right. So first off, what we're going to talk about was we're going to talk about the uh, the video game. So uh, the video game uh, came back like what like in like 90, 90, 92, I think I believe it was. Uh, Mortal Kombat had like had all the hallmarks of original story. You can like immediately recognize it by its style, music, characters. Um, but in reality, there's very little about Mortal Kombat that was actually original. Uh, Mortal Kombat was created initially as a John claude Van Damme game that borrowed heavily from Street Fighter. Uh, most of the characters were obvious knockoffs of, uh, of, existing, um, of exist- existing characters or existing people. Johnny Cage was the movie star presumed to be the uh, John claude Van Damme character. Um, he's even wearing like an outfit that looks like it was t- taken directly from Bloodsport. Have you guys yeah. ever noticed that before? Oh, oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And he does the splits the way Van Damme, of course, was famous for. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, uh, the nut punch. Uh, Raiden uh, looks just like the guy from Big Trouble in Little China. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the the three storms. And, Love that uh, film. Yeah. Uh, so like so he uh, th- he was obviously taken from that. Uh, Liu Kang was Bruce Lee, no doubt. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, even he had like the waha, like you know, yeah. like all that, all that shit. Um, like his fucking his his flying sidekick and everything. Like, yeah, who's obviously Bruce Lee. I love his bicycle kick. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Um, and uh, Sub Zero and Scorpion were just ninjas with uh, with gang colors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Blue, yellow, yeah. and then of course, like from there, um, all the the games thereafter, uh, they just basically used the exact same like ninja character and then just added red or purple or gray or whatever. 
Yeah, um, reptile, smoke, all those. Yeah. Well, no, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, uh, he was unmasked in Mortal Kombat 3. So that was actually uh, Sub-Zero's uh, brother. Yeah. Yeah. But they still put him as Sub-Zero, but uh, also um, in no, the they, first game. They also introduced uh, other characters besides just ninjas. You had, like, Jax being introduced in the sequels, um, different fighting style, uh, more of a boxer. Mortal, Mortal Kombat 3 definitely had a very wide variety of, like, different fighters. Yeah, yeah. Shit that I'd, I actually hadn't seen before, like Cabal. Um, uh, Mortal Kombat 2 had fucking... Um, one Baraka. of my favorite Baraka was one of my favorites. Yes. Well, the first time I saw him, I was like, "Oh shit, dude!" Like with the teeth and the fucking blades, like, like a badass. like a white venom, basically. Oh uh, yeah, man, he's fucking great. Yeah. Uh, Sh- Shang Tsung uh, was the old master from pretty much any kung fu movie of the seventies and eighties. Yeah. 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 Um, like so, in spite of all this, like Mortal Kombat became one of the greatest video game franchises of all time. Um, when did you guys first uh, first play the game, and what are some of your uh, some of your memories from playing it? My first memory was, believe it or not, I didn't play Mortal. Com- I played I played Mortal Kombat one on a PC of all things with a keyboard. I remember I got like a little disc floppy disk drive and was able to play Mortal Kombat with no sound at all. But I was so excited because I heard about the fatalities, and I remember kids on the bus having the magazine showing all the fatalities from Mortal Kombat one, and I was excited to play that. So it was like a a bootleg version that I played on a floppy drive. But the most memories that I have is during a snow days i had some friends because my parents never bought me systems because they said pc a, a computer was enough so i never had a nintendo or a sega genesis or anything like that but my friend across they the street didn't did. love you enough no i guess not so <laughs> across the street during snow days when we all got tired we all would go inside the basement unfinished basement and have a fucking ultimate mortal kombat 3 tournament all of us just doing turns back and forth playing Mortal Kombat. And that's where I got to learn all the characters. And my favorite character at that time was Cyrax. I enjoyed the fuck out of Cyrax. It was basically like a yellow scorpion, but it was uh, just, I mean, yellow, just like scorpion, but it was a um, cyborg. Um, uh, cyborg. Yes. Fucking loved it. Loved the whole net thing and everything else. Cause it reminded me of scorpion, but it was a net instead of a harpoon. Um, that's what I used to play. That was probably, I'm, I'm saying about like 93, 94 or something like that. I think, I think, I think three. I think Ultimate Three came out in ninety five. Yeah, it, it was around that time. Yeah, ninety five. Like I said, I, I never played Mortal Kombat two because apparently that was the most popular one, and I never got to go to arcades to play it. Like every, I'm sure you guys have. How about you, Stu? Uh, I actually was introduced to Mortal Kombat in the arcade. Um, Mortal Kombat one, and this was before they got released on any home consoles or anything like that. I remember yeah. my parents would, as a treat, drop me off at the local arcade and whatever money I had, and I would just blow all my money and it, it just was insane to watch this and did you ever I, beat the game yeah oh and the, but no, the i didn't beat it in the arcade i once i played it i had sega at the time and then when it dropped on consoles for sega with my experience that i had yeah then the arcade i'm like i need this fucking game yeah. <laughs> it was amazing <laughs> turning on the blood you know that they that the uh nintendo uh, super nintendo didn't have oh yeah the blood that, code yep Yep, I mean, just having a great time, and just like you were saying, just having friends over. And yeah, but did the Super Nintendo playing. actually like uh, they kind of took away some of the fatalities? Like they changed the fatalities where there was no blood. Also, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it, was, it was kind of like a um, like a like a PG thirteen version of it. Yeah, because yep. I remember Scorpions was still there because it was just skeleton. There was no blood burning them up, but like the stuff where yeah, in Sega uh, without the code, it was the same thing. They're, yeah. they're basically the same, but then it Sega gave you the the, the ability to turn on a code and. Uh, grant access to that oh yeah and there was a whole bunch of other features you can unlock with different codes and everything at the bottom of the screen i remember that and of course the toasty toasty that was a good one yeah so um for me i was oh god i can't remember i remember seeing it in the arcades and uh i never like i tried to play and i i didn't know what i was doing and i but i remember there was like um i had a few friends one of which was this asian kid named kai kai that was his name kai kai c h i c h i kai kai that was his name interesting he was actually uh, to be more accurate he was korean super he was like my best friend growing up um but he was he was a little bit older and he was like a video game god he was one of those like stereotypical asian kids that you hand him a video game they've never fucking played and he would just see would like oh okay cool and you just fucking destroy it. I'm like, what the fuck, man? And so he he went to like there was a 7 Eleven. I'll never forget this. There was a 7 Eleven down the road. And uh, they had they had the Street Fighter arcade. And I think they had at one point they did have the Mortal Kombat arcade. And um I like I wasn't supposed to, but I went down to the uh because that was beyond the boundaries of where I was supposed to go when I was a kid on my bike. But I, I went down there one time just because I really wanted to see the game and see him play. And he I don't think he beat it, but he got pretty far, and it was just so, like, 
beyond anything I'd seen before, you know? And yeah. so obviously like years later, I get a Sega Genesis and I was like, I have got to fucking get this game on Sega. So I did, and I ended up mastering it, and I fucking loved every minute of it. I could, yes. I beat the game with every single player. I mastered every single player, every single fatality, every move you can think of. I could do it with my eyes closed. What is so. your, what, that's actually a good question to bring up. What was everybody's favorite character out of the whole Mortal Kombat trilogy? Favorite character? Oh, that's easy. A scorpion. How about you, Stu? I think it evolved throughout the games. Sub-Zero was my Pretty pretty normal main character. Yeah. Um, but uh Barack. I love that. Love Barack. Yeah. Slice Baraka. and dice. I remember the slice yeah. and dice Baraka fatality. was amazing. Um and I really liked uh Cabal. Oh yeah. How about you, Lenny? So when I first the uh, the first game it was Liu Kang. I was more of a traditional I li- I liked him. I, I liked his moves. I was I was very I had like a set combo in my head that was unbeatable. So I, I was really good with Liu Kang. Um and then when the second one came out, it was it was Baraka. That was my fucking that was my jam. I was like, this dude is badass. I'm gonna learn everything I can to be fucking as good as I can with this character because I liked him so much. Um, and then Mortal Kombat three, I actually and this and you guys are gonna probably like roll your eyes and laugh, but because of my heritage of being a Native American, Night Wolf, uh, Night Wolf, Night Wolf <laughs> I was like, finally, finally, we have a representative in the tournament. All right, <laughs> and so I fucking learned how to play him. And, his, I, I mean, you got to gain it to him. His moves were pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Like, all of his yeah. weapons that he would pull out were, like, these glowing, like, phantom weapons that he had, like the tomahawk and the, the arrow. Wasn't his uh, animality a wolf? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It was, it was cool. And so, I, you know, he, he was the guy that I would play. But I, I didn't really, I, for me, I guess, skill-wise, Mortal Kombat 3 got kind of up there for me. So, I, I didn't play it as much because... That's they the started one I played the most. That's well because that's when they started featuring the thing where you could go into a fight with somebody and not use a single special move, but fuck them up because the moment they say fight, you you would have this combination of like high punch, low punch, high kick, low kick, da 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 da, and the guy would run across the screen and be like, bah, 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 and then and you got <laughs> and you, like a quarter of your health, you're down to a quarter of your health, and you're like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> so and that's when it got hard, and I I don't know, I, I kind of dropped off. I wasn't as good, so. Yeah, see, mine would always be, see, the beginning was Scorpion, of course. I love the harpoon. I mean, everybody loved to use that harpoon move, bringing your character over and doing an uppercut. Harpoon, uppercut. Harpoon, uppercut. That was my favorite thing to do. Yeah, and the follow-up with, like, a flying kick. Yes, yes. And then, exactly. You're bringing back memories. Um, Scorpion through Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, but Cyrax was my ultimate favorite in Mortal Kombat 3. I loved fucking Cyrax. No, dude. So I started playing. I started playing the games, and I was, like, like six, eight years old or something like that. My, the Sega Genesis console I had was, like, was my big brother's. And somehow, some way, this game ended up at our at our house. I guess my parents just like just had no idea about like how violent the game was or anything. Yeah. Because like, because we had it, and like, and the exact same thing with like with news the, reports with how violent it was. People, it was, yeah, parents complaining and everything else, and blaming it for a whole bunch of things happening in uh, in the world. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, which was par for the course back then. They blamed everything on video games, like yeah. Doom, Marilyn Manson. Like they blamed like you know pop yeah. culture for like for basically every, every bad thing that happened back then. Yeah, but either way, like. So yeah, I, same thing like with like what Lenny said like you know play the game a thousand times like yeah I didn't I really didn't sleep a whole lot when I was a kid and like I <laughs> like, stayed up all night and you know like went to school and like tired as hell and then like then came home went to sleep and then stayed up all night just kind of that cycle like but it, it enabled me to do pretty much like whatever I wanted late at night so like so I play the game until like three in the morning with like all the different characters so that way you could see like all the different endings and by yeah. doing that you learned a lot about the characters yeah, yeah. and that's what yes. really drew me to Scorpion is because I found out that he, that his story was a revenge story yeah that like that his family was killed by was killed by Sub Zero and like and he was like he was sent, he was sent to hell and then uh, and then rose from hell to avenge his fam to avenge his own death and his family and like and that just that shit just fucking spoke to me for some reason. Like, I just loved it. Well, well so one I, thing I love about the arcade version is that uh, when you're in the whole credit screen before you put your credits in, it flashbacks to all the different characters and it shows a little story about them and everything else. I fucking love that. There's a whole background story for every single character. Yeah. And then you have the one screen where you saw where you, like you see, you see Goro and it tells you all about him. You're like, what the fuck exactly. is that? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And that was the cool thing about that was back then, like it, you didn't know really know about Goro until you got to him, yeah. and then you would, and you didn't have. That was the other thing about Goro is that you would, he would show up, and you're like, oh fuck, man, and you got to figure it out, and you got to figure out quick. You got to figure out okay, what moves does he do? Oh shit, and, <laughs> and like then he grabs you by the bottom arms, so yes, yeah, fuck out of here. Yeah, and I think every single person would pucker and and panic when that would happen because he would grab you and start pounding on you, and you're watching your health go down. And you're like. Ah! 
<laughs> well, that, <laughs> that, that, percu- that percussive sound, that doot, 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 doot. Yeah, it's like he's yeah. beating the fuck yeah, out of you. Yeah, but you remember that also that one where he's just that solid punch and he punches you all the way to the other side of the screen? Yeah, dude. Oh, God, dude. I, I remember fucking the only way to fucking beat him is to do the, the high kick move constantly over and over again just to get past him. Yeah. He was yep. so hard because, but once you do that high kick, all of a sudden he does that grab and starts doing that banging on top of you. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes he would catch you in midair and you're like, oh, bullshit, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, none of the other characters do this. This is fucking bullshit. No, um, it's, it's, uh, and I was going to say with about Scorp- uh, Scorpion's story, that was why, like, I liked Sub-Zero, but I could never really get into him because he, uh, he, because of the story of the background of, like, what he did to Scorpion, I was like, this guy's a fucking jerk. I don't like him because of what he's done, so. Yeah, so the game came out, like, in, in 92, uh, in 1995, they came out with the, uh, with the, with the movie, um, I love this fucking movie so much. Uh, previous, previous doing this podcast, Stu had, t- had kind of talked about like you know when we we talk about comparing these movies like the the new and the old, like we really have to kind of like try to remove ourselves from the nostalgia, and it's fucking hard too. Yes, like, yeah, just, yes, dude, it's it's really hard too, man, because like because this movie like was. I mean, like being being a kid, loving the video game so much, and then hearing they're making a movie about it, being so excited, and then seeing it, and like and it was so fucking cool, you know, for a kid. But like, but it was so fucking cool, whatever. Like, and even though there wasn't really a, a, a really complicated storyline, like the plot wasn't really yeah. hard to hard hard to understand or anything like that. Um, and there was like some definitely like cheesy moments. It was still like a great fucking movie. Oh, I um, love it. I love it. I saw it in the theaters with my dad, so that's actually a good uh, father son moment. Me, my dad took me and my brother to go see that in the theaters, and that was when my mom was like out out of town because she doesn't like movies like that. So he took us to the theaters to see that, and I fuck my dad even loved it. So it was it was great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everything about this movie was like, was fucking banging, dude. Like the, the soundtrack, both like, well, actually both the score and the soundtrack. Fucking title is just amazing. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Dude. Like it, like it gets you right from the beginning. Like that is probably like one of the top 10, like best openings for a movie ever. Yeah. Just, yeah. Like just how like it starts with like with the screaming of Mortal Kombat, then g- jumps right into like, into like, you know, that, that techno syndrome score and like the flames shooting up through the, through the emblem of Mortal Kombat. And like the fucking title comes out like with like that banging metal, that ting, 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 ting. And everything like fucking turns and it's like Mortal Kombat. And dude, just top ten best openings ever. Yes, no, I have to agree with you on that. And as far as that person. music goes, though, um, so they went through three different record companies. Um, all of them were rejecting uh, to make to have that. You know, that's a film score. Uh, they didn't want to go ahead and finance or anything like that. And the the director and everything were like, no, this is the tone that we're going for. This is it. So they went through three different ones. And then finally, somebody said, okay, we'll, we'll publish it. Ended up going on to becoming one of the best-selling film scores of all time. Yes. You know, honestly, the thing that's funny about that is that particular score, even if you were to cut out the Mortal Kombat at the beginning of it, anyone who's anyone that hears, like, just, like, uh, 10 seconds of it, they fucking automatically know what that is. Oh, yeah. Automatically. It's one of the most recognizable scores in hum- in, in movie history. Yes, it is. Bar- George, Clinton did, George Clinton did the score for Mortal Kombat. And he did an amazing job. Very dark undertones and everything else, but there's a lot of big techno and a lot of uh, even rock, some rock scenes, especially like in the club scene when uh, Sonya is trying to get uh, Kano, yeah, and everything else. So, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, um, I think the uh, the club scene. I think that was like that was like um, uh, KMFDM or something like that. Maybe like that. Yeah. that was like that did that song. But uh, either way, um, but yeah, like the uh, so the the movie was basically the tournament itself was like was a clear homage to Enter the Dragon. You guys remember that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruce Lee. Yeah. Bruce Lee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it was clear clear homage to that, which is cool because like that was one of the best kung fu movies like ever ever made, featuring like the dearly departed uh, Bruce Lee. Um, Rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, so like so a really really great movie um, and uh, have, have we already talked about like uh, Paul W S Anderson yet or no no the, the thing about Paul W S Anderson he he's only done one movie prior to this which was the Kurt Russell movie Soldier if you all remember mm-hmm. that one yep. and uh, he went ahead and did this one he's a young director and he did a great job I, I he because video game movies have a bad rep they they've never been good I mean think of it like Double Dragon Mario Brothers uh, what else was there The Wizard uh, The Wiz you know which one I'm talking about yeah. the one with um. Uh, that that boy from um, what what is it from uh, Little Wonder Monsters? Years. I forgot his name. The Wonder Years. Yeah, was he from Wonder ben Years? Ben Savage. Yes, yes. So, but he's done other movies, and most of his movies are crap, believe it or not. But he's done two video game movies: Resident Evil and Mortal Kombat, and probably one of the best sci-fi horror movies of all time: Event Horizon. Um, but then a lot of his movies afterwards have gone to shit, like um, most of the Resident Evil sequels and uh, Pompeii and stuff like that. More of a director for hire. 
for uh, movies for like big budget. Say what you want about the popcorn. Resident Evil movie sequels. Ah. I enjoyed every single one as just a popcorn flick. Yeah, yeah it ain't a great film. Yeah, Absolutely no they're way. fun to watch. But I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't think they because Resident Evil is more of like a rip off of Aliens when you think about it, just with zombies. And uh, isn't that his wife, Mila Jovovich? Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she actually holds the record for most amount of people killed on film. No shit. Yeah, I that did not sense. know that. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, mainly because of the Resident Evil series. She's killed over a thousand people. See, I know. I remember. You remember the movie Expendables? Yeah. Where they had all the old action stars? They wanted to get like a whole female version. I know that she was one of the picks that wants to be in, the, in, be in that movie. Her, her, Sigourney Weaver, a bunch of the old females from the You know 80s. what? Honestly, uh, you know, we had a discussion about this in the past about how like they try to like, oh, we, gotta, we have to have a female version of this and that. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would I would fucking watch that honestly yeah. if they got like Sigourney Weaver fucking um God what was the other one that was really big back in the day uh, we get Linda ha- Linda Hamilton oh yeah yeah. Linda yeah, Hamilton. yeah 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 and who was the other one she was in the fly she played um, uh, Gina Davis Gina Davis yes Cutthroat Island um, Gina, Long Kiss Goodnight Long Kiss Goodnight yep. was fucking brilliant yes. like she was great like you talk about a strong female character like well she's directed hell yeah, see dude. the thing is I know I'm going way off track uh, she's directed she's um, married to Rennie Harlan who also directed Cutthroat Island also directed Long Kiss Goodnight they were married so yeah you know, it's just like so if you want to get Anderson. A, if you want to bag a really hot like female celebrity you got to be a director or producer that's what you're saying <laughs> yeah. like that's a you'd be like 20 years older than them and they're like i love him sure you do sure you do honey so so there's one thing that led I, um that i'm gonna say like that this the new the newer movie like did not have that this movie definitely had was iconic characters yes with like with like with iconic dialogue like you know shit that you remember that you can quote um talk about like about Kerry Tagawa as like a Shang Tsung. He was actually a huge departure from like from the Shang Tsung that we knew from yes. like from the video game yes. because like in, in the first one Shang Tsung was like was like this older like shape sh- was like was this old man like shapeshifter. And then like in the and like in the following games he like he was like, he was a younger character but still the, the Shang Tsung that we saw in the in the movie was far different from anything else in the video games, but he fucking killed it. Dude. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Dude, yeah, his voice alone was perfect for the role. And they even brought him back to voice in the newest Mortal Kombat game. Um, for uh, Mortal Kombat 11, I believe. Yeah, yeah. and he looks like him and everything. Oh, and he's exactly. like, cool, I'm, I'm, so, good, I'm good with it. One of yeah. my favorite yeah. fucking lines of all time is he goes, Luke Hang, I have looked into your soul. You will die. You I'm will like, die. fuck yeah. And, it, and it's, it, it would be so easy. <laughs> it to, has it be, begun. It would be so easy like to like to hand that up or whatever and just totally fucking fail in the delivery, but he nailed it. Oh, dude. he nailed he it. Fucking dude, nailed yeah. it. Yeah. Kerry Tagawa was fucking great as like as Shang Tsung. Another person that I felt <laughs> did, I felt did really well was Chris Lam- uh, Lambert. Yeah, Lambert. Chris Lambert. Chris yes, Lambert. there can only be it one. Lambert. Yeah, because he's, fr- he's French, yeah, right? It's Lambert. Yeah. Yeah. Lambert. So, yes. Come on. Um, yeah, so like, so dude, he did it fucking great, man. As Raiden, like again, iconic, iconic portrayal, iconic fucking dialogue. Yes, and like, and the new Raiden just doesn't have that. No, the new so. Raiden was more, more. You can't tune. say it's closer to the video games because the games he looked actually even more American. He didn't really look Asian. Yes, and even sounded that way. I'm sorry, but I remember playing the story mode. He, he did not look that way at all. I, I'm going to disagree. Okay, uh, well, he, he, he looked. I like, respectfully disagree. Yeah, he, he to me. He came across as a very old Asian, not not old and decrepit the way Shang Tsung was, yeah, but just very old and wise, um, and that's the way I always took him as. And then when they when when I heard they cast Chris Lambert, I was like, okay, I like him. All right, <laughs> we'll no, see what he does. I, well, he, he, kind of... he was probably one of the most top like. Yeah top billing of all the characters inside that because none of them were really known other than Christopher Lambert and everybody knows Christopher Lambert for Highlander that's one of his yeah. most best roles ever in my opinion the first movie the other ones or whatever but the first one and yeah he's a bad actor but he's got that he's got that look and the way he says things yes. it just worked out perfectly in my opinion and you grew up on it you, you kind of liked it that way yeah no he, he definitely definitely belongs to like to like a, a roster of like of of actors that like that are they they overdo things. They chew the scenery, or whatever. Like, but like, but there's something about them you can't take their eye, your eye, your eyes off. See, I, I compare yes. him to Ruger Har. Would you compare him to that, like Ruger Har? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like there's other guys like other uh, character actors like uh, Udo Kair. Like uh, he was uh, he did Blade. Um, he's done like a bunch of other movies too. End of days. Um, Ron, Ron Perlman. Like, I was not, just thinking Ron Perlman. Yeah, I not, really was. Not a great actor. A- uh, Alien least. Resurrection. Yep. You yeah. know, like, but like, but still, like you, like, you guy, enjoy watching him. Yeah, yeah, but I'm gonna say this. I enjoy watching Ron Perlman more than Christopher. I, I love Highlander and everything else, but Ron Perlman's actually almost good in anything you see him in. Ron Perlman was fucking awesome in um, 
in uh, Sons of Anarchy. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's fucking great in that. And uh, Hellboy. Yeah, Hellboy. He did a good job in Hellboy. That Hellboy is, you know how certain roles are meant for somebody? That role was meant for him. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like even when they, who, didn't they do the guy from uh, from Stranger Things? And yeah, like, David, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Um, I'm blanking on Guy played Hopper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't yeah. know his name, but he's he's a big actor. He's been in some, a lot of dramas and stuff like that. He's in Stranger Things. I've seen him in, I've seen pictures of him in that. Um, shit, he also did the Tide commercials. Remember the Super Bowl Tide commercials, which were actually kind of hilarious. Going to be yeah. in the uh, uh, upcoming Black Widow film. That's right, as the Red Guardian, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, you know, where Ron Pil- Perlman killed it as Hellboy, and, like, the fact they try to remake that movie so quickly, I, that must have been some sort of, like, contract. You know, we have to make this so we can make money off of it before we lose it kind of thing. Like, nobody really wanted that movie. It didn't have to be remade. Like, the, like the original uh, two Hellboy movies, like... Uh, what was the what was the second one? The Golden Army. Golden Army. Yes. Golden Army. Like, not 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 as good as the first one. I really like the first well, one. Well, they're they're two different movies. It's the first one was more of like a uh, hero film. The second one was more of like a fantasy film. Yeah. Honestly, like the reboot was unnecessary for that. Absolutely. No, we're, we're, well, they tried to do the whole R rated thing and tried to go gore and trying to make it more shocking, like yeah. the comics were, but. Everybody loves Ron Perlman in the original too. So yeah, well, when you're talking about like you know like uh, like a orphan demon from like from hell, like uh, you know like there's you're already dealing with like pretty pretty heavy subject matter. Dark so, like, stuff. So yeah, you have to have some levity there in order yeah. to make the film enjoyable, and that's exactly what Ron Perlman delivered on. Yeah. Um, but but beyond that, back to Mortal Kombat. Uh, all I, I, the first, the original movie had a lot of iconic characters, and there's another thing too. The actors felt blessed to be there. So when you're talking about Robin Shu, Lind- Lyndon Ashby, and the the girl that played uh, that played Sonya, uh, Bridget Bridget Wilson. Bridget I'm trying Wilson. to remember what other films she's been in that I've seen her in. Because Happy she, oh, fucking. Uh, she's Billy Madison. She was I in, in that. Um, the House on Haunted Hill. Yeah, the last. Oh the shit! Last, I completely right? forgot yeah. about yeah. that. I forgot about that. Yeah. She was last in, action movie. She was hero. the. She was the uh, one that was like the uh, um the reporter type thing. Thing seeing that she was the reporter, the one with the uh, camera. And a good, yeah, that was yeah. a good remake. She was yeah, also in a one. um in a uh, romantic comedy uh with a guy from Third Rock from the Sun, the squinty guy. It wasn't Luke Kane, the guy who that was cast as Luke Kane. He was more of the stunt coordinator, wasn't he? Yeah. So that's that's another actually a uh, pretty good story. So uh so. Yeah, all those guys felt really, really blessed to be there because, like, you know, they they're relatively unknown. Robin Shu was like was a was a stunt actor up until that point. He actually knew uh, Ho Sung Pak, the guy who was the 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 video capture like or the the image capture for Liu Kang for the original video game. Really, they were friends. They knew each other because they were both like stunt actors. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah, so get this. So, like, so uh, Robin Shu was telling the story about how like he was in Hong Kong, he was at the airport, and he runs into Ho Sung Pak, and he's like, he's like, hey, bro, like, how are you doing, man? Like, how have things been? And and uh, Ho Sung Pak says like yeah 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 no I'm going I'm going to uh, to America we're gonna do like this um, this image capture video game and Robin she was like well what is it called and he's like ah, Mortal Kombat I'm like yeah whatever and Mortal Kombat and then like and then. Like lo and behold, three years later, Robin Shu is playing the exact same character that is that he's buddy that he's buddy's playing. That's fucking cool. Yeah. That's really fucking cool. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no. So like, so all those characters felt really, really blessed. All or sorry, all those actors felt really blessed to be there. Um, and they all got along really well, which is conveyed, man. Like you know, you yeah. see that on screen. Like when Lyndon Ashby and Robin Shu and Bridget Wilson are all hanging out and everything, and like, or they're just kind of having like their banter back and forth. You can kind of buy that they that they 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 know each other and like and that they like they um they get along. Uh, kind of like an, uh, kind of like an, uh, an alien and aliens, uh, where like where the, those characters spent or those actors spent a lot of time together and really kind of got to know each other and it, it came through on the screen. There's certain things that you can't fake, and that's like you know like that camaraderie is one of those things. You know, and I actually um, I, I I have it in my history right now for my YouTube. Um, I was going through finding like videos on, you know, the, the movies and stuff, and uh, particularly the ca- the actor who played Liu Kang and then the guy who played Johnny Cage, like. To this day, they're like best friends. They're like best friends. They, their families know each other. They, they like hang out together and stuff. They like, go to like each other's kids' birthday parties and shit. Yeah, yeah, shit like that. Like they, they, they became like basically like brothers almost after that movie, and they've had a really strong friendship ever since. And it's really fucking neat when you see stuff like that. Yeah, that's the thing is uh, Johnny Cage, the actor who portrayed Johnny Cage, which I rarely ever seen him in anything else. I think I remember looking at his filmography. He's done more of like TV shows, yeah, and stuff like that. But I thought he fucking nailed it. Oh, dude, oh, he, was, he was you bought it. ass, bro. You bought it. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I his could fighting not picture was... anybody else. No, he did great. Fucking loved it. And the thing about him is, like, he doesn't, like, when you first see him, he doesn't really look like a, a guy that would, like, whoop the shit out of a group of guys by himself. But then you see him start fighting, and you're like, oh, fuck, man, this guy can fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, mean, I love you, that fucking I would scene say in the beginning. Similar to Jean-Claude. If you never really saw Jean-Claude... You know, do anything. You just see him walking around the street. You ain't thinking much of him. 
And then all of a sudden he pulls off his fucking shirt and starts whooping some fucking ass. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Which is actually a good credit. It's actually an extreme credit to him, to Lyndon Ashby, because um, when compared to guys like Robin Shu and like in the, in the guys who played like Scorpion and Sub-Zero and Reptile, all those guys were like were trained professional stunt like stunt actors martial arts like you know they've been doing this stuff for years Lyndon Ashby not so much like you know like he was pretty good but like but he wasn't like to their level and even still like with all the tra- like you know they trained him they got him to that level to where like where it looked good on film as a matter of fact the guy who played Scorpion was his trainer really yeah I did not know wow that. So, so like so if you watch the movie like their fight like their fight is like is very very well choreographed and like and very very well done yeah. uh, it's it's a lot to do with the fact that like that you know like he was that was his trainer that was that was that was them the those two working together you know and honestly I gotta say that um in my opinion the the fight between Johnny Cage and Scorpion is one of the best in in both films and on like do that fuck I let's put it this way so just real quick when I first saw this film I went with it was my dad my stepmom um my stepbrother and myself and my dad and my stepmom were like we're gonna go see this romantic bullshit comedy or whatever <laughs> and uh, my dad was cool with with me and my st- stepbrother who was younger than me going and seeing Mortal Kombat well by the time we got there we were kind of running late and Mortal Kombat was really fucking popular it just came out right. So we ended up getting seats like in the very front fucking row, okay? Screens like in your face. And um, not only that, but because it was one of those more popular action films back in the day, this was something that um, movie theaters like to do. If they had an action movie, you would know because they would turn the volume up so fucking high yes. that it would rattle your fucking bones. So I was in a movie theater like that where like they're, the, it was, it was bone rattling fucking loud. I loved every fucking minute. Every single punch that landed, you were like, oh, it was fucking loud, dude. Super loud. And that movie started and after like the and after like the um the theme song was done, everyone in the theater was like, fuck yeah. And I knew instantly like I was a part of something amazing because it was like the whole movie theater was full of like young adults and like kids my age. I, I want to say I was in like junior high at the time. And, like, that scene with um, Johnny Cage and Scorpion when the fight was over and you see, like, you know, he he, he finishes uh, Scorpion and, like, it shows his fucking autographed picture. Yeah, because yes. that's, that's actually in, what was that, Mortal Kombat 3 two, or Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat 2? 2. Yeah, but when that, that. when that happened, the whole fucking audience in that movie theater stood up and fucking applauded. That's how fucking good that fight scene was. They were like fucking amazing like everyone was clapping their asses off and then everyone finally like, kind of settled back down and kept watching the movie but everyone stopped what they were doing to applaud that scene See, yeah, when I mean, you're talking about your favorite fight scenes that's actually a good thing to bring up you you got yours i fucking love luke king and reptile scene even though they're, they're not my favorite characters that <laughs> scene was so fucking intense because it reminds you how fucking hard reptile was in mortal kombat one how fast he was and everything else and you could just see it when they're just fighting with each other and you see reptile get thrown on the ground and he just gets right back up and starts running back at luke king i fucking love that scene you see him going through the walls and then you see fucking luke king's bicycle kick which was fucking amazing yeah dude. oh man that was my favorite fight how about you uh tyler all right, so we can break it down movie by movie. Um, so for for me, it's actually kind of a split between uh, between Scorpion and, uh, and Johnny Cage uh, and Luke, Luke Hanks' first uh, first fight with you know, with the the dreaded black dude. Yeah, like dude, that was a very well choreographed. Oh, like, the oh, the one at the, yeah, at with, the uh, with, beach with, with the bow staffs, dude. Like Fuck that, yeah. that she was fucking dude. The the, the, the I, the I speed saw that and the fucking music and like just like like the, the the professionalism between those two men, like how well how well that fight was choreographed and how well it was executed, like was just like it left me in awe, bro. You know who that black dude's from? Hmm. American Gladiators. You remember that show, American yes, Gladiators? Yes, yeah, that's he where was. he was from. He was. You're right. Because I remember when I saw him, I was like, man, he looks familiar. And I used to watch that. What was that on USA or something like that? It was something some like channel like that, but I used to watch American Gladiators. Did you ever watch that show? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, now that black dude was in there, so that was really cool that he was in the movie like that. Pugil sticks. Yeah, that that was cool as fuck, dude. Like that was a good fight. But oh, like, yeah. but yeah, I don't know, man. Like I guess like if it's kind of comes down between those two, like it's probably uh, probably the Johnny Cage and the Scorpion fight because I love Scorpion. It was a very very well done fight. You know, you got to see uh, Scorpion take off his fucking face, and, like, yes. and do like and do the fatality. Yeah, yes. dude. Um, you know, even though like you know he didn't really execute it, but like but. It just just like that fan service of like of like you have getting to see that on film, and then of course like the autograph at the end or whatever. It was just now like a uh, it was just a like culmination of all these great things just kind of coming together, and like and I arrived at the end of that scene. So, <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Stu? I'm actually gonna have to say the first half of the Liu Kang Shang Song fight when they're just fighting each other before uh, Shang Song calls up the souls of 
it defeated enemies. You talking about the end of the movie? Yeah, where yeah. how wonderfully well matched they were, and how quick all the movements were on point, and everything like that up until the point where Liu Kang then bloody Shang Tsung's lip, and Yu Shang Tsung's just like motherfucker. See, see, we can all <laughs> say, we can all say together that this movie is like. It's it's our fucking favorite. We love this movie. We fucking love this movie. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. Re- yeah, there are cheesy parts, and of course they're going to be. It's not going to be the perfect movie, but it, rewatching it now, the CGI was just so especially on reptile. So yeah, reptile bad. Was all, it, was it wasn't bad. just reptile. Anytime they would zoom in, you know, uh, 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 the tower, the tower, the tower, yeah. uh, or any any other stuff. It was just so so jarring. Yeah, it was up that time. So man. bad. It's dated. It, it is. It is. Bridget it was the time. Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Do, you, do you need like time for yourself? She was one of my favorites. You, you need some tissue and some uh, going to the bathroom. <laughs> Bridge, <Bridget, laughs> uh, she was yeah. All she right, so great. let's get into some like some of the, the not so great things about this movie, the CG. Like we already kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, so apparently the 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 special effects director was completely unfamiliar with like with the video games, and um, you can kind of see that because you can you can see that with like with Scorpion Spear. Yeah, because I don't know how she got like. Spear, kunai. Um, I don't know how she got like a screaming metal dragon See, that's at, out of a spear. Like I don't know how that happened. And on top of that, like it's like when it comes through, kind of like it comes out of his fucking hand. It's clean. There's no blood on it. It's not like it's not tarnished by the fires of hell or anything like that. It's completely clean and shiny. It screams like and it flies across the screen. It looks fucking terrible. And it's going all zigzagging through the woods and everything else. It's not going straight like in the game. It's just like go, traveling and following wherever Johnny Cage runs. Yeah, like a heat-seeking missile or something. That, that's, why, that's why I have a problem with that. See, I, I think it's a great fight, especially the one in hell, the one where in Scorpion's once, Lair. Yeah, but, once they get out of the woods and yeah. they start fighting, you know, then it's good. But yeah, initially I was like, what the fuck? But you got to admit, you got to love the welcoming new line that Scorpion says, welcome, yeah. when he gets in hell. Because that's not in the game, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and that was all Ed Boon, by the way. I fucking love it. Like, yes. you're like, yeah. Oh, and like, and that's the funny thing, too. Is like, you can watch an interview with Ed Boon, and you don't buy it. You're like, that's that's the dude. I remember you showing me that. That's the dude that, like, that is that is the voice of Scorpion. And, like, and so, like, he's at Comic-Con one year, and, like, one of the guys like, hey, do the Scorpion thing. Like, do the Scorpion voice. Do the get over here. And he's just like, he's like, all right. And he's like, I got to go away from the mic because it's loud. And he just goes, get over here. And, like, and you hear it, and you're like, Oh, oh my god, that's him! <laughs> that's fucking him! I wonder how many what, people stop their tracks and they're like, guy? what? I'm sure a lot of people uh, uh, made a what mess of their pants after guy? hearing that. No, I think the Toasty guy is somebody else. I, I, I thought Toasty. Toasty! I thought that was him. No, because you can look at a picture of Ed Boon, like, that's not okay. the same guy. No, it's it's uh, the one, I think it's one of the other uh, creators of the show, uh, creators of the movie. So, so okay, anyways, one so of other, the, other things about the movie that, like, that you guys didn't like so much. Uh, so for me, um, I know I've, I've said the name a couple times now, but Bridget Wilson... Oh, she's so she's so nice to You're look at. You're never gonna stop so about Bridget Wilson. I'm no one. No, no. Seriously. I want to touch the hiney. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I love you, Tyler. No. Um. So she was really nice to look at. Okay, but she was absolutely not thinking, not believable whatsoever as a fighter. Man, she just wasn't. Uh, you know, she had she had very limited scenes where she fought. And when she did like the scene where she fights Kano, it's 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 cringe, dude. You can tell just by looking at her, the way she's bouncing around, the way she's holding her fists, that she's not a trained fucking fighter. I she's loved, not trained. I love that they did her scene where she does the whole flip the thing and, and put her legs up because that's yeah, in the game. I it fucking was, but that. it was just not believable, man, at all. That yeah, whole and fight there was no, was there was no way she was gonna like throw Kano the way that she like she does in the video game. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not gonna happen. That I don't know that that whole scene. I was just kind of like, well. Okay, I'm just gonna let it go because it's Bridget Jones. All right, there is there is something I don't like about the movie. There is something Sub Zero's part. Um, Sub Zero doing his uh, special uh, uh, move, basically where he just like sits in the room and squats like he's about to take a shit, and all of a sudden, ice is, <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's yeah. what it looks like he's doing. And then you just see like a whole like spear of ice just going around him and growing. That's not in the game, and I didn't like no, that. No, I was the same way. I was like, that's what the fuck. But is I that? did like that they had his fatality where the guy does that, you know, that, uh, what, what is it? One of the, uh, Shang Tsung's goons or something yep. like that comes and does a running and he just does that freeze move. And he just automatically just like smashes on the ground, uh, frozen. And you see him just in glory parts and his, Shang- head, his head falls at Shang Tsung's feet. And he's just, yeah, yeah. Fatality. That really that's the first fatality line right there. And it that works was pretty perfectly cool. too. Cause you see that guy doing all these moves. So yeah, you just see sub zero just slowly building that ice ball. Yep. <laughs> all right. And just not doing anything else. Else is building that ice ball. Guys doing all these fucking fancy ass. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he starts running, 
I, I love yeah. Kano's description of that scene too, because he's like, he's like, and then he, and then he explodes. It's not very fair. Like it's, yeah. it wasn't you could fair. See his guts and everything. <laughs> and the way Kano is just Almost sitting there my lunch. eating, <laughs> and, yeah. like that, and yeah. talking to Goro. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, like it's totally Same. normal. This guy's got four arms and could kill me, like no problem. This is normal. Yeah, but, yeah. That worked with Kano's character though. But, it really yeah. did. That scene. What about the fucking music, man? It's like, oh, it was just, good. Like, just the fucking like the drums, like a ta ta ta. Yeah, it was on. Dun, it was onimus, dun, dude. It was good. Dun, dun, dun. It's like just like the fucking tension is just building and yeah. building and building as like he's as like he's growing the ice ball. That dude is like is ramping himself up, like cracking his fucking bones and shit. Like this is my moment. I'm gonna take out Sub Zero and I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the next fucking warrior for Shang Tsung. I'm gonna win it for for Outworld. Like he's so he, like this dude was probably so excited about his oh, opportunity yeah. to to prove himself in, in front of Shang Tsung. And just gets fucking destroyed. There's yeah. no block of ice into gore. Yep, good, good, good fatality though. I like that. So, uh, so yeah, so like, so we we start out talking about things we don't we didn't like, and then got right back into the things we fucking loved about this movie. So. <laughs> That's, That's why we love this film. Movie, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but Which I have so much shit to say about the next one. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I think that's pretty, that's pretty much, that's pretty good for for like for the '95 version. All right, so well, okay, you got to talk about. The horrible, 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 horrible sequel, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Oh. All right, yeah, let's, oh, let's jump, let's jump oh, into it. Oh, my even. God. That's a little so, five-minute so, segment on that so piece the, of shit. This should the, only the, take the five cash, minutes. The cash grab fucking, oh. like, they, they like swapped sci-fi Sony, movie They swapped Sony out with someone shit. who was ugly and also couldn't fight, so I'm like, well, there's that. They got rid of the guy that played Raiden. I, I was like, what the I know, fuck I don't is think, happening? I don't know if they got rid of him. If they kill off Johnny Cage in like the first five minutes of the movie, I mean, he was one of the best characters in the fucking first one. Yeah, and that's yeah. why Lennon Ashby didn't want to do this, because they're like, they're like, what, you guys are going to kill me off in the first five, first five minutes? Fuck, fuck you guys. You. Yeah, Did you exactly. not see me fucking kill Scorpion? Fuck you guys. Like, I don't, I don't. And I don't, I'm sorry, yeah. the, the Raiden replacement just pissed me off, especially when, especially when they had I like that actor. The, the actor they chose for him, I like him. I, him I, I like him as an actor, but he's not Raiden. I'm sorry. No. No, and then like just the special effects were terrible. The the, the people, fucking camera looking up and you see him flipping. I think I saw that at least fifty times in that fucking movie where you just see the guys flip over the camera. Yes. Oh and my then the God. other thing that drove me nuts was uh, like when Liu Kang like finds his animality and he turns into a fucking dragon. Even as a kid who desperately wanted this to be everything that it could have been. I, during that scene, I was like, what? Oh, come on, man. Like, I just got to the point where I was done. And that's saying something. I was like, I was a teenager, and I, I could I could barely sit through it. The comparison to this, I know this is a very strange comparison, but the movie compares me to Planet of the Apes because Planet of the Apes started with a great budget, and then the sequels just kept going down in the budget. That's what it felt like with this because the budget just seemed like it was like an old sci-fi movie on TV. It didn't even look like a movie theater movie. No, I know. Yeah, that was the other thing. It looked like it was one of those made-for-TV special effects fucking uh, sci Sci-fi channel movies. I was like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, yeah it was terrible. Yeah, so Raiden was played by uh, James Ramar. Uh, he was also the uh, he was also Dexter's dad. Yes. Oh, Dexter's shit. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. He did a good job. He I did. thought as Dexter's dad, I felt like he did a really good job. Like, you know, understanding like he was like this cop that like that understand like his son has like has this problem and was like was kind of helping him through it. So that way he didn't end up in jail. You know? He was also yeah. the porn king in uh, um, the uh, girl next door. You remember yep. the, you remember yep. that? Yeah. Yep. Which I actually thought he was good. He yeah. actually did that role really good. Like I said, he's a good actor, but he's not fucking rated. It was horrible casting for him to be his Raiden. Yeah. I didn't like the voice, the the stature, especially the fucking haircut. What the hell? Yeah, I was just gonna say the buzz cut. He's like, oh uh, yeah, uh. yeah. He well, he, he like he he made some deal with like with the elders, or whatever. Like, and part of that deal was like was he had to become mortal. And I can't even remember. I remember like what that was, like what the deal was. I don't so you, fucking forgettable. I, I I watched. I tried sitting through that movie, and it was a pain. It, it, it was it was like the chore. It was a fucking chore. exactly. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. The one thing I will say though is I liked. Shiva, and, really? And, and Annihilation. Just, I thought they did a lot better job of making the forearm, you know, beast that she's supposed to be than either of the Goros. How about the no Montero, the Italian uh, uh, slick hair uh, Montero, uh, Montero, uh, Montero. Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. god. So like that was the thing that was I didn't like that because in in the game Toro was like was this like very had like he had like a demon head like you know he was, yeah he was like, bald he was, yeah. had the yeah. horns yeah. Yep. Like, horns and everything like that like he had like these really protruding like. Uh, eyebrows and like and cheekbones and everything. He didn't look human. And then like they they like they hire this fucking Guido 
to like to play Matoro for like for yeah. like kind of like three. He's got like the slick back hair or whatever. Like, and he's like, you gotta expect him whatever. Like, to take a toothpick out of his mouth. We're like, hey, Johnny, we gotta fucking whack this guy. Whatever frat world. Yeah, buddy, let's fucking do it. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right, but I will admit there is one fight sequence I actually enjoyed was Jackson Cyrax. I thought that was actually mm-hmm. a pretty cool scene because I love Cyrax and seeing Cyrax on you know in a movie like that since it was my favorite character in Ultimate Mortal Kombat uh, Three. I didn't enjoy that, dude. Although I, thought, I hated I Jax. I hated Jax. I fucking cringe like when when Cyrax shows up or whatever, and like and you, like you hear like his like his mechanical fucking uh, voice or whatever. I don't even know how to do. Oh that. fuck me! <laughs> yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you didn't like that, did you? No, I did like Sonya's kiss of death. That was pretty cool because that's how she killed Cyrax. Yeah. Like so, like mm-hmm. so, like getting to see that on film on like you know like that was that was pretty good. Like some some fan service like is 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 worthwhile. Well, here's a good question for you guys. Do you think that would you recommend to watch Mortal Kombat Annihilation for anybody? who is a Mortal Kombat no. fan. Or would you no, 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 no. Yeah, no, if, if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, like, you have to watch it because, yeah. like, because, you know, like, there's a lot of things in there, like, that are that are fan service. You get to see Nightwolf. You get to see Jade. Like, you know, True. like, you get to see a lot of these, like, these classic characters. Scorpion shows up for some fucking reason. And, like, and... Oh, Baraka, too. You get to see... Yeah, yeah, you Yeah, get with to, the fucking unmovable uh, mask. The, the mask that looks like it's, it's just plastic. You don't even yep. see anything move. Yeah. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, my God. You get to see, uh, you know, you get to see uh, um, uh, fucking, so Jade Nightwolf. Um, Melina? Wasn't he Melina in there? Ermac's in there for like for like a minute, and he gets fucking he killed. Gets killed. He gets killed. Which is crazy, because he was actually a really big, uh, really um, powerful character in the games. Yeah. So, like, so you get to see a lot of, a lot of these characters, you get to see a lot of these characters on film. You see um, hamster wheels. But then there's the fucking <laughs> hamster. There's the fucking hamster balls. Holy shit. So for some reason, like they have to travel like from place to place or whatever because world is because Earth is being taken taken over by Outworld like as it does in the video games, but like to travel from place to place they have to get in these these hamster balls and I just I just I fucking can't. Dude. Yeah, no. like, honestly, if they so I've some of the imagery um, from Mortal Kombat three the game where it shows like the sky has turned like this blackish red and there's a swirl and you show people like looking up the sky. The fuck? Whose punishment shot is that? God fucking... Da- I- yep. Oh, who votes for a punishment shot? I. I. God damn it! <laughs> Son of a bitch! Give me my phone so I can fucking turn it off. <laughs> uh, okay, All right, so, fine. so you're going to so, have that fucking shot. God fucking bless America. All right, fine. I'm going to drink this, and I'm going to finish what I was fucking trying to say. Stupid fucking phone. Bottoms up, pussy. Ugh, lug, lug. Oh, oh, it feels so good. Ah, son of a bitch. All right, so. All right, Tyler. All right. No, okay, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Overall, overall, like, uh, another con I have to bring up with, like, with both 1995 Mortal Kombat and and Mortal Kombat Annihilation is, like, is that they were trying to make both of these movies uh, PG-13 to reach as many people as they possibly could. And, mm-hmm. like, with this new movie, I guess, like, they just said, fuck it, whatever. But, um... Well, fans have been wanting that. Fans have been wanting the R-rated content because that's what Mortal Kombat was in the game. Absolutely. R-rated content. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, so, I mean, like, well, like, the original games, like, you know, like, they were, like, the biggest thing, like, you would talk about with that game is, like, hey, man, have you played Mortal Kombat? Like, it's so, like, bloody and violent and everything like that. Like, it's cool as fuck. That, that was, like, the main draw, like, of that video game. They tell and then, and then, like, and then they, they, the movies come out and, like, and they're not very violent at all. Like, yeah. like the, the fatalities were like, were, you know, like they're, they're very, very PG and, and like with this new movie, like they, they weren't at all like, you know, like they're very, very, it's very bloody. It's very violent. It's very vulgar. Like the, the dialogue is totally different. That's definitely like a, a con of like, of the old movies is like, they say they weren't violent at all. Yeah. They, what I was going to say is that, um, I don't know if they, um, they, well, I don't have to jump ahead too much, but the way that they kind of end the newest Mortal Kombat movie that they made, they they sort of indicate there's going to be a sequel of some kind. Now, I'm hoping that they do it, actually do it justice and actually do it right. But like when they had the whole where Outworld um, invades Earth and they start finally go fuck the rules, this is what we want to do, and we're going to do it, and you can eat my ass. Yeah. So the one of the images that I, I I hold on to that I feel like if you got the right people involved could really fucking sell this scene and make it fucking epic. Is a scene where it shows people inside of a metropolis of some kind. They're like surrounded by skyscrapers and they're looking up at the sky like this and screaming because the sky is like red and black and it's swirling and people's souls are literally being sucked right out of their bodies. Yeah. It's a fucking powerful, cool image. And I kept, even back then when I saw that, I thought to myself, you know, if you got the right people involved, they could really, really fucking do that scene justice. Yeah. And that by itself, that invasion would, would, would sell the movie itself. So right. I'm hoping that if that does happen, they fucking do it right and they don't fuck it up. But anyways. 
Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us for the first half of our Mortal Kombat segment, and we cannot wait for you guys to join us for next week where we do our second half of the Mortal Kombat segment. We will see you then. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for listening to our podcast, Barrel Age Flicks. We are so excited for the upcoming episodes headed your way, including the bonus episodes of The Small Batch and Sammy Selects. If you like our show, please spread the word. Let other people know. Also, if you're looking for us on Instagram, you can find us at Barrel Flicks. And on Facebook, you can find us with the name Barrel Age Flicks. Our podcast is on the following platforms of Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor, Radio Public, Audible, Pocket Cast, Spotify, YouTube, and now we're also on Pandora. If you want to shoot us an email with comments or any suggestions, you can do so at BarrelAgeFlicks at gmail.com. Also want to give a huge shout out to White Bat Audio on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. Your music is amazing and we really appreciate it a lot. We hope to see you guys on future episodes and upcoming weeks with all the stuff we're recording. And thank you guys so much for your support and listening in. See you then.